Good afternoon and welcome to our November Bureau of Business Research webinar on the annual economic impact and quality of life impact of Nebraska craft breweries. My name is Eric Thompson and I'm the director of the Bureau of Business Research and I'll be taking you through a PowerPoint presentation of our research results on this topic. Uh, before we start that PowerPoint presentation, I'd like to let you know about a few features of our webinar. Uh, there should be a, a toolbar at the bottom of your screen where you can access these features, including uh, a, uh, a chat window that we have that would allow you to, to chat uh, with some of the other webinar participants during the presentation. We also have a question and answer window. So at any point during the presentation, you could go ahead and uh, type in a question that you'd like to, like to have answered. Uh, we will be answering those questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, however, you can type them in at any time, including uh, after the webinar is over. Uh, we'll also be asking uh, two poll questions from our webinar participants at the two spots during the webinar. You'll be given a few minutes to go ahead and provide your answer or opinion uh, to those questions, and then we'll go ahead and see uh, see what opinions the webinar participants had. Uh, anyway, all that will occur as the PowerPoint presentation is moving along. So with those points made, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, with our PowerPoint. Uh, uh, first of all, this economic impact uh, study is a, uh, the type of study the Bureau of Business Research has been very active in producing for our state, uh, sometimes the region and nation as well, uh, just for some examples of other uh, cultural and recreational organizations or activities that we've studied, uh, Omaha Zoo, the Omaha Performing Arts, Husker Athletics, and the annual Sandhill Crane Migration here in Nebraska, in that case, uh, jointly with the University of Nebraska Kearney. So uh, we're certainly uh, providing you some information on a topic we do a lot of studies on, and we hope it'll be of interest to you today. Uh, by way of uh, in production, we're gonna really focus on two factors, uh, the economic impact of craft breweries on Nebraska, uh, as well as how craft breweries contribute to the quality of life. So the first, the first thing, the economic impact would be more like the employment, business activity, payroll created by craft breweries for our state, the increase in all of those things in our state's economy due to the, due to the presence of a, of a growing craft brewery industry and then the second would, would look more at in, in towns and communities where the craft breweries are located, how uh, does having access to that uh, service impact people's quality of life? Well, let's start with the economic impact first. Uh, so uh, there's three sources that we see from craft breweries on uh, impacting the economy. The first is uh, brewery production, in other words, beer production. Uh, in, in recent history in Nebraska, uh, it was, uh, Nebraska was not a state with a large brewery facility located in the state, uh, making beer for uh, regional and national markets. So our craft brewery industry has reintroduced uh, beer brewing into uh, our state economy over the last few decades and uh, generated new value-added agricultural production here in our state. Uh, the second factor is capital spending. So the Nebraska uh, craft brewery industry is growing in Nebraska, expanding at a good clip. Well, that naturally means there's going to be a significant amount of capital spending on new buildings, equipment uh, associated with those breweries. Last, uh, the last source of economic impact can be visitor spending. Uh, in some cases, uh, craft brewery customers are bringing or retaining new, uh, new spending in our state's economy, both uh, at the craft breweries or uh, sometimes at uh, multiple establishments, uh, perhaps if uh, uh, someone also goes to the craft brewery and other restaurants or other uh, entertainment establishments. So there's also offsite spending as well. So we're gonna look at these. Before we look at each one of those sources of impact, we have our first poll question. So which activity will have the largest economic impact of the three we just mentioned? Will it be brewery production, capital spending, or that visitor spending both on or off site. So think about what your expectation is and go ahead and register your poll vote. And we'll look at those answers a little bit down the road here in the webinar. Uh, let's talk about brewery production, beer production. So 1.5 million, $1 million gallons of 
craft brewery production in Nebraska in 2018, according to state uh, data maintained by the state of Nebraska. This is up 29% over just the last two years. Uh, the craft brewery industry has been active in our state uh, for a number of decades, but it's certainly been growing rapidly in recent years. Um, so up 29% since 2016. Uh, meanwhile, other beer sales, uh, I'm calling it wholesale sales, uh, in the state have been down during the same period. So we have a, a figure showing this where the blue line is Nebraska's craft brewing industry. You see that 29% increase in production, <coughs> whereas there's a decline in production uh, and, and sorry, in sales from the wholesale sector. <clears throat> All right, so if we're gonna look at the economic impact, of course, it's not sufficient to just know the amount of beer produced. The real key to driving that economic impact is the value of sales of beer production, the people employed uh, producing beer and their payroll. So to find out those things, we surveyed 53 uh, Nebraska craft breweries. And we did quite well with a response of 36 usable responses from those survey recipients, <coughs> where we gathered information about sales, cust number of customers, uh, origin of customers, uh, employment, payroll, and capital investment in, in those survey responses. Based on that, we were able to estimate that during 2018, there were a little more than 13 million of sales from craft breweries to, of beer to wholesalers, distributors, and retailers, uh, obviously for resale. There was also uh, 16 and a half million in direct sales at tap rooms and restaurants in Nebraska. And I'm speaking here of just beer sales, not uh, meals and other things. Uh, now taking those two figures, 13 and 16 and a half million, uh, the total value of beer production was estimated to be uh, 17.26 million given that uh, you know, a significant share of that tap room and restaurant revenue from beer sales reflects the value of hospitality services, uh, running a restaurant, uh, uh, all the costs associated with that, rather than compensating for the value of the beer that was consumed. So when we focus on just the value of the beer that was sold at tap rooms and restaurants, add that to what was sold to wholesalers, distributors, and retailers, we come up with that estimate of 17.26 million in craft brewery beer sales. And there was an estimated 265 jobs and 6.5 million, 6.59 million in wages associated with beer production at Nebraska's craft breweries. Again, uh, this economic activity would not have been present in the state before craft brewing uh, entered the state. Uh, so how do we take that direct economic impact and create our estimate of total economic impact? Well, we're gonna wanna add what's known as the multiplier to that direct impact. The multiplier impact results from two sources. Uh, first, breweries in, in their operation must purchase supplies. Uh, so in some cases, grain, some cases, services, things like accounting services, legal services. So uh, the breweries themselves purchase business supplies. Uh, also, brewery owners or their employees um, uh, make an income uh, from their work and spend their paychecks or their income on all the normal things that households spend money on across the economy. So those two things result in an additional economic activity in the state known as the multiplier impact. So when you add that direct impact to the multiplier impact, you get the total impact. So here it is uh, in table form, the total economic impact of beer production from Nebraska craft breweries. You can see that 7.26 million in direct economic impact value of beer production rises to 32.5 million in terms of the total economic impact once that multiplier is added in. in. Terms of employment, it jumps from 265 direct impact to a total impact of 359 jobs over the course of the year with nearly 12 million in earnings. Okay, let's look at the second source of economic impact, brewery investment. Nebraska's rapidly growing craft brewery industry has seen some significant investments. According to our survey, 8.15 million in investments during 2018 uh, on construction of buildings and so forth, renovation of buildings, but also sometimes brewery equipment. Of course, in the case of the equipment, most of that is made out of state. So if we just focus on the construction occurring here in Nebraska, installation, renovation, uh, wholesaling or transportation occurring in Nebraska in regard to purchasing uh, equipment, 
brewery equipment. The direct impact is $6.17 million. Uh, here is our a table showing our estimate of the total impact, including the multiplier impact effect. So with the multiplier impact, uh, uh, annual investments in 2018 had almost uh, the $10.5 million impact, and in terms of employment, 82 jobs, and another $4 million in labor income. Uh, construction employment pays pretty well. Uh, the last component, visitor spending. Now, visitor spending from the perspective of statewide economic impact and local economic impact are quite different. When you're looking at the impact of visitor spending on the local economy, uh, of course, you're going to count visitors, uh, uh, any visitor from outside the community, whether they're from another part of Nebraska or from out of state. When we focus on the statewide impact, we're more, we're more interested in what was the spending by out of state uh, visitors, out of state brewery customers, or Nebraska brewery customers who would have left the state to go to a brewery elsewhere if that option wasn't available here in Nebraska. Well, to identify that group, we focused on visits to Nebraska craft breweries located along the Nebraska border. Obviously, quite a few of these are in the Omaha area. Uh, according to our survey estimates, there were 593,000 such visits in 2018. Many of those visitors were from Omaha or other border towns themselves. However, 212 were, for, were not from the community where the brewery was located, but rather a nearby community. In the case of those border breweries, an estimated 69,000 of those 212,000 would have been from neighboring states. So we took those 69,000 folks and looked at the typical spending of people when they visit a brewery to come up with the visitor spending impact. We did do a survey of craft brewery visitors yielding 188 respondents uh, and got visitor spending at the brewery and also offsite uh, when the brewery brought them into an area, uh, what else did they do where they may have spent at some other businesses while in the area. Average spending of $9.49 at the brewery and $5.29 at other establishments. Uh, so when we took that made some adjustments when we took that data and applied it to our 69,000 visitors. We got a direct state economic impact from visitor spending of a, just shy of a million dollars. And this would be addition to the spending on beer production that we already talked about. So I think we're ready to take a look at our first set of poll results and answer that question. So. Uh, which industry activity will have the largest economic impact? A pretty even split, uh, almost half saying beer production, uh, about a quarter saying capital spending on all these new breweries and equipment for them, and about a third, uh, approaching a third saying visitor spending. Um, I, think, uh, I think what we saw that brewery production, 47% of you picked, was the largest source of impact. Although, uh, visitor spending, uh, well, any, any of the three were reasonable answers. There was a big impact in capital spending as well. We'll see that visitor spending has a big impact from a local perspective, uh, validating that choice. Uh, but uh, from a state perspective, the impact is a little smaller, as we saw. Okay, here's the total economic impact of visitor spending. Uh, obviously, that jumps up a little bit, but uh, still, still relatively small. Total impact short of $2 million from a statewide perspective. Here's our total statewide economic impact of the Nebraska craft brewery industry, about $45 million annually, uh, about $16.5 million in labor income, and 465 jobs in 2018. Okay, uh, before we move on and talk a little bit about the local visitor spending impact, uh, let's go ahead and ask our second poll question. On a scale of one to five, with obviously with five being highest, one being lowest, how satisfied were brewery customers, when we asked them when we, when we did our, our survey of brewery customers, how, how satisfied were brewery customer survey respondents with the quality and accessibility of craft breweries in Nebraska? So was it about two out of five, three out of five, or four out of five? What was their level of satisfaction? So think about your answer and go ahead and respond when you're ready. Uh, it'll be a few minutes here before we talk about the answer to that question. 
Uh, before we do that, let's talk about the local economic impact. So when you look at the economic impact of beer production that we did statewide, when you look at the economic impact of craft brewery investment that we did statewide, in terms of the direct impact, those local impacts would be the same as they were at the state level. The total impact might be a little smaller, but not much. Uh, a little smaller because obviously economic multipliers at the local level are a little smaller than they are in a larger geography like a state. The biggest difference is with visitor spending. From a local perspective, visitor spending is much larger. The first reason why is, is we, can, we can focus on a, a larger group of breweries. With the state impacts, we really need to focus on the breweries along the state border. But with the local impact, we can think about the impact on communities throughout Nebraska that happen to have a craft brewery, or if it's a larger city that have a, a significant number of craft breweries rather than just one or two. What we see uh, across the whole state during 2018, there's nearly 3 million total visits to Nebraska craft breweries according to our survey results. So it's quite a lot of visits. Uh, sometimes that's a single visit by people throughout a year. Sometimes it's multiple visits, but a lot of people visiting our Nebraska craft breweries. Um, and from a local perspective, the communities that have a craft brewery are attracting visitors and retaining their own citizens uh, to spend money within their community. So what we're gonna talk about here is the additional economic activity in all the communities throughout Nebraska that have a craft brewery uh, versus the communities, the localities that do not. So what do we find there? We see a total impact. This is just from the visitor spending. So we didn't repeat the analysis for, uh, craft, for uh, beer production and brewery investment. Just for visitor spending, there's a 730 uh, employee impact, $50 million. So the additional money that's retained in these communities that have craft breweries or large cities that have more craft breweries rather than less um, is about $50 million a year once you do the multiplier impact of the total economic impact and about 730 jobs. Okay, so the second half of our survey of craft brewery customers, the 188 respondents we got, responses we got asked some questions, not about spending and things like that, but asked some questions about satisfaction uh, with craft breweries, other local amenities uh, such as restaurants, libraries, movie theaters, uh, recreation and uh, entertainment options of various sorts and tried to gauge how satisfied people were with both the quality and access to those amenities, including craft breweries. Uh, we also used a technique called derived importance uh, uh, to examine how correlated were their responses to their overall satisfaction with the quality of life. It's a way to kind of uh, verify or, or, or back up uh, individual responses about particular amenities. So what do we find? Well, uh, and, and, and in answering that question, we'll go ahead and uh, answer the second poll question as well. So it looks like about four out of, uh, I'm sorry, about almost three quarters indicated a rating of four out of five uh, with people split, rating people split between two out of five and three out of five. Well, let's see what we found. And actually I'm gonna show you the level of satisfaction with quality and access to all the community amenities we talked about. Uh, because of that, it can be a little hard to see, but you can see there that uh, uh, fourth from the left is the response, responses re related to breweries, um, where the black bars uh, reflect uh, satisfaction with quality and the red bars uh, reflect satisfaction with access. You can see in the case of breweries uh, that the, the satisfaction with quality and access was both somewhat over four. So pretty pretty high satisfaction with quality and access for breweries. You can see for a lot of other local amenities, it's also reasonably high, but typically a little less than four. So uh, via this indicator, um, breweries did quite well. Now, the second question is how well did the response to satisfaction at breweries correlate with people's responses about overall contribution to quality of life? In other words, people are happy with the breweries, brewery respondents are happy with the breweries, but were those customers uh, indicating that uh, it was making a key contribution to quality of life? In this case, uh, the results for breweries are more typical 
uh, of, of what we find for the other amenities, more of a middle of the pack in the case of breweries. So uh, that correlation was about 0.25, indicating that the breweries explain some of the feelings about overall quality of life in these communities, but there's other factors that matter as well, dining options, movie theaters. Uh, so you can see that the correlation was present, was not, it wasn't zero or anything of that nature, but it wasn't, it wasn't standing out as much as it had been in the previous results. So I think this indicates that uh, craft breweries are one of a number of factors that contribute to the quality of life in the towns and communities that they are located. Well, those are the main findings from our study that we wanted to present to you today. Uh, and uh, I guess at this stage, we should go ahead and uh, answer any questions you might have had uh, as the survey uh, or as the PowerPoint uh, went on. Uh, it's not too late to type in a question now, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and start with the first one. Do you have a number for the value added by craft breweries as the percent of state GDP? Um, uh, we do not have that number. My expectation would be... Um, uh, as uh, as, be, as we saw that craft breweries are a growing but still modest share of overall beer sales. Uh, that being said, uh, beer purchases are just one of the many food products, food and beverage products that people purchase. Uh, and then there's other, other lines, other groups of consumer spending. So uh, I don't think we'd find that it would be a large percentage of GDP, probably presumably below 1%, uh, uh, but it does seem to be contributing to the quality of life in the communities. Okay, what's the second question? Uh, any data on cost of job creation by the craft brewery uh, for per 100 jobs compared to other industries? So we did not specifically look whether the craft brewery industry was more of more efficient per dollar of sales in creating jobs. I think what we did document is how many more jobs are created by the industry either directly or through the multiplier impact because we are now, and we have been uh, over the last few decades, we've always, we've had some craft breweries for quite a long time, but uh, the industry has really grown in recent years and given its current size, we've demonstrated how much additional economic activity and employment there is in the state. We did not compare it uh, in terms of efficiency with other businesses. Uh, the third question, why were there only 38 usable responses from the 53, 36, excuse me, from the 53 breweries surveyed? Well, uh, that was simply non-response. So uh, we did ask a number of detailed questions about breweries and economic uh, you know, business activity. Uh, entrepreneurs, including brewery owners, are very busy people and it just wasn't feasible for everyone uh, to answer. Uh, another question, is there a saturation point, so to speak, on brewery expansion? Um, I think in, if you think about any uh, good or service, in this case, uh, uh, there's the service of hospitality, of, of restaurants, and, and of course, uh, breweries sometimes have restaurants or they have tap rooms or other, other, other uh, venues for consuming the beer. Uh, I think whether it's any uh, hospitality service, whether it's any uh, consumer good uh, like beverages, uh, the, uh, there's, there's going to be a broad industry with many different types of providers and, uh, uh, there, I don't know if saturation point is the right term, or there's going to be a, an ultimate share of the market that a, a newer, relatively new service like craft breweries, it's been around for a long time, but it's growing in popularity. There's going to be a, an upper limit to how large it'll grow versus other types of beer consumption. Um, what that exact point is, I think, is, is unclear. You saw from the graph at the beginning of the PowerPoint that the industry still represents a pretty small share of overall beer consumption. So I don't expect we're at that point yet. Okay. Is now a good time to get into the craft brewery market 
or is it too late? Well, I think anytime you see the growth that we've had, um, uh, it, it's certainly not a, a new market anymore. That might have described uh, the situation four or five years ago. That said, there's many areas of the state, many, many uh, decent sized towns that do not have a craft brewery. Uh, but no, I, I, I think there's been significant expansion in the industry. So I don't know that people joining now would be, uh, would be very early entrance to the craft brewery industry. Uh, it's, it's more, more established now. Okay. The next question. Uh, are the slides available separately? Yes. Uh, the slides will be uh, available on the Bureau of Business Research, uh, website, uh, which is, uh, bbr.unl.edu. Next question. Is there a saturation point, so to speak on brewery expansion? Um, yes, like I, I said earlier, I think with any industry, uh, and you think about market segments, uh, even when uh, new segments are forming and growing, ultimately they'll reach a point, uh, a, a stable point. Um, the craft brewery industry is expanding. I don't think we're in the early stages of that. Uh, but, uh, you know, one thing we see with any type of consumption activity is as it grows, uh, you do sometimes see more people getting interested in it, and we just don't know where we are in terms of the expansion of the craft brewery industry. Demand may continue to grow as more venues become available, uh, but obviously at some point we'll reach a, we'll reach a stable point. Uh, as the rapid expansion of the industry is relatively recent, I think there's reasons to expect we may not be at that point yet. How, uh, forgive me, the ha, ha, have assessed water quality and quantity issues related to the sector. If one wants to start study the water use, how accessible are the breweries in providing data? I would not know how accessible uh, the breweries are in providing data on, uh, on their water use. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, as in any uh, Great Plains state, uh, certainly an agricultural state, the aggregate use of water uh, is a concern. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know that we want to import all of the water used in beer by importing all of the beer. If there's companies in our state uh, able to profitably produce beer, uh, I don't know that that would be a, a major driver of our uh, concerns about water use. But I, I, I may not realize why you were asking the question. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, have there been wine and related industry study? And if so, how do they compare? Um, the Bureau of Business Research has been involved in uh, studies of the wine industry, um, which I, I think it's fair to say expanded, uh, expanded rapidly in Nebraska uh, a little bit before the craft brewery industry did. I know distilleries have been growing in the state in recent years as well. Uh, I don't remember the specific numbers off the top of my head to make those comparisons, but I think the wine industry had a, a similar level of economic impact. Um, uh, perhaps it was uh, more uh, or less, but uh, uh, it was also found that the wine industry was contributing to quality of life. I think uh, communities throughout Nebraska and, and many states, certainly Nebraska, there is a need for more interesting things to do, more interesting venues to go to. And I think the craft brewery industry provides that. I think there was a similar finding about wineries when the Bureau studied that industry. Uh, did you purposely not include the Nebraska equipment supplies in the state that employ over 150 and generate 40 million in equipment sales? Um, we did not, uh, we did, uh, well, we had two types of sales that we looked at. There's the annual operating sales, kind of the normal replacement and updating of equipment you're using. And then we focused also on the uh, investments that occurred with new production. So uh, the ongoing, the part of that 40 million that's ongoing economic activity 
would have been captured at least in part in the multiplier impact for our brewery production. And part of it also would have been captured uh, through the uh, impact of investments. But the $40 million figure you're citing there, uh, I don't think our study would have fully captured uh, an impact of that size. So it may be that that was underrepresented in our study. Uh, although again, I don't know if that $40 million impact refers to value added in the state or a combination of the resale of parts if things are assembled in our state or uh, what all is included in that. Okay, uh, rate of return from investment. We did not study that. Are there grants or community funds available to start a brewery? Uh, or specific resources? Um, I am not uh, aware of the answer to that question. Um, if someone wanted to email me a question like that, I would pass it along to the uh, Nebraska Craft Brewers Skill Guild. Um, has there been an increase in ag products going directly to breweries such as hops and uh, barley? Um, I, our survey results uh, indicated that uh, there's still a substantial uh, amount of importing of inputs into beer production. So while growth has been occurring, um, uh, it, it's, it's, it has been moderate in, in relation to the overall size of the industry. Uh, there's a, one other question. Do you know if the growth in the amount of breweries has been faster in smaller communities or in larger communities over the past few years? I would say it's been pretty broad. So I think, I think we've seen a lot of, a lot of uh, middle size by Nebraska standard communities get their first brewery in recent years or smaller Nebraska communities. But at the same time in the larger places, I think we've seen the number of breweries or even craft brewery districts form. Um, so I'd say the growth has been pretty substantial in many corners of the state. Well, I appreciate uh, the, everyone's time in attending uh, the webinar today and be happy to follow up uh, with any questions you have. Uh, let me give you a little information about, uh, well, first of all, let me mention that uh, the uh, Bureau of Business Research is going to have one more webinar here in the fall fall semester of 2019. We're going to produce an economic forecast and share that with you on December 13th. <laughs> but if you need to contact us, uh, please contact uh, with an email, bbr at unl.edu, or you can follow the Bureau of Business Research at uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and the web as shown here. So thank you again for your time. We'll leave this up for just a little bit uh, in case anyone needs to jot down that information. And again, the PowerPoint slides will be uh, put online at bbr.unl.edu.